It was another day at work in the hospital. And this time, I was at the pediatric ward. And I open the door, and I see so many patients and their parents sitting on beds, on the floor, wherever there was space, really. I go up to the nurse and ask her, who are the patients that are most sick? She pointed at the far right corner. I then realized that they weren't patients today. I had to look at them through a different set of eyes. More precisely, another nose. I am a hospital clown. I wear a nose, I put on makeup, a costume, and I can become anything they want me to be. But before I go into that, let me tell you a story. So I'm in that ward, and I'm playing with the kids, I'm doing magic tricks, I'm making them laugh. And then I see a little boy who was probably around eight years old, but he was suffering from a chronic liver disease that made him very weak and so sick that he couldn't even sit up in his bed. As I walked to him, his mother came quickly to me and said, there's no point going to him. He's very angry all the time, and he probably won't even talk to you. I decided to go ahead anyway. As I walked next to him, he put his hands on his ears and said, please don't sing. <laughs> I said, OK, I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. What else would you like me to do? Would you like to play a game? He shook his head. I said, OK. Would you like to see a magic trick? Mm -mm. Would you like me to tell you a joke? And this time, he looked at me. He said, wait. Why don't I tell you a joke? I said, OK. He told us a joke, and it was actually quite, quite funny. And his mother was so surprised he was actually talking to us. And then after that, I asked him, OK, do you want to see a trick? He said, OK. Did a magic trick. And then I asked him to choose his favorite game. And he chose my favorite. You know the one where you put your hand across and ask them to hit you, and you take it away? When it was his turn to hit my hand, he hit my hand quite hard. And his mother was looking at me and said, please be careful, he's too weak. It was that moment I realized that he had forgotten he was a patient and that he was sick. He was just playing like a regular kid. I then asked him, would you like me to sing a song for you? He closed his eyes, he nodded his head, and as I was singing, he clapped his hands. It was time for me to go. I said bye to everyone. And as I was leaving, I heard a familiar voice. He shouted out, when will I see you again? It was that moment I realized what a big impact that was, and even though I spent just a few minutes. And that was the power of hospital clowning. Hospital clowning is not new. In fact, it dates all the way back to Hippo Hippocrates. He talks about how being in a good mood positively influences the healing process. Why even Dr. Thomas Sidenham talks about how a good clown is better than a bunch of asses with drugs. <laughs> I'm sure all of you have heard of Patch Adams. He was made famous by the movie. But it was based off on a real person. His name was Dr. Hunter. He started hospital clowning way back in 1986. He believed that love and laughter were the only ways you can treat a patient and get him better much quicker. Laughter. All of us laugh. And as a clown, you must understand I'm not an entertainer. I'm not the clown from the circus. But I use laughter as a tool. Did you know that 
As children, we laugh almost 400 times a day. But as we get older into the adults we are, it reduces to 15, only 15 times a day. So it's not surprising when you hear that when you're at a hospital, it's zero. It can go down to as low as zero. All of us know what a hospital is like. We've either had the chance to be there as a patient yourself, or to look after a patient, be it your family or friends. It is probably the worst thing that can ever happen to someone's life. It's the antithesis of home. It's the opposite. It's nothing like anyone is used to. It's an adverse effect. It's an adverse event. Everyone is anxious. And when you look at pediatric children, they're anxious, anxious children and they're anxious parents. Not knowing what is going to happen to their child, not knowing what the child is going through. There's trauma and emotions, high and low. But most importantly, the patient feels a loss of control. He has no control of what is happening to his or her body, or what the treatment is going to do to him or her, and that makes the whole situation a lot worse. Hospital clowning, also known as medical clowning, also called clown doctors. It's all essentially the same thing. Like I mentioned, we use laughter as a tool. It's not the only thing we do. And research has proven that it decreases the amount of painkillers and the amount of anesthesia needed for procedures. I would talk about it as a distraction therapy. For example, when a nurse or a doctor has to put in an IV line or any procedure that is painful, the anticipation of that procedure is probably more painful than the actual procedure itself. So if you can distract the attention away from it, it really makes a difference and probably even less dramatic than it would be. Hospital clowning is about collaboration. A hospital clown can't do it by herself or himself. They have to work with the doctors, with the nurses, with the parents and the patient. It basically involves everyone. It's a collective experience. And it's something that even though it lasts for probably 10 or 15 minutes, it's something that they've all experienced together and it lasts much longer even after they have left. We give power to the patient. We don't force anything on them. We don't make them watch what we want them, what we want to do. We ask them. They choose. And they decide what they want to experience with us. We challenge the status quo. Believe me, when I put that nose on, I'm not a doctor. I am on the same level. There is no difference between rich or poor, sick or well. And there's no difference between the doctor and the patient. They're all involved, and they're all treated the same. Now, clowning can be intimate with just a one-on-one -on -one session, which requires a different set of skills. And you have to understand, it's, there's a lot of improvisation needed, because no two situations would ever be the same. So we need to adapt. So it can be as intimate as with one, or as many as an entire ward of patients and their parents with the doctors and the nurses. We need to make sure that this reaches a lot more hospitals, whether it's in developing countries or even developed countries. It has spread a lot across the world. After Patch Adams started in 1986 in America, it has reached almost to countries like Australia and New Zealand, a few countries in Europe and a few in South America. But there's still a long way to go. 
There are some institutions that even offer it as a paramedical course. So if you're interested, you know where to look. Yes, we do take care of the mental well-being of the patient and the family. But we also have other uses. There's a device called the incentive spirometer that we use for post-op care to prevent complications. It basically is an exercise to help expand your lungs and prevent secretions from settling in. This little boy is on his second day after an open cardiac surgery. And he refused to do anything because he was probably in pain most of the time and wasn't really interested in doing anything. So when we came in, we made the whole spirometer a really cool game. It has like different colored balls in it, so it's like red, yellow, green. And we developed a whole game for, and, and made sure that he did it. And so it helped him. So we have more than one use in the hospital. After all, the whole idea and the aim of a doctor and a clown is essentially the same. We're trying to alleviate the pain and the suffering and improve, and improve their outcome. Who is a hospital clown? It is an interesting question because I get, that, I get asked that all the time. How can you be one? Do you have to be a medical doctor to be a hospital clown? No, you don't. We are professionals. We are skilled, either in the arts, mostly theater, music, dance, magic tricks. All of that definitely helps. But most importantly, we are empathetic. Unless you can feel what the patient is going through, you will never know how they think and what they want from you. We're trained, sometimes for a few weeks, a few months, or even years. Like I said, you can go to university to become a medical clown. And we're trained to be sensitive to the hospital setting, which is what makes a big difference. It's very different performing in a hospital where there's sickness all around and there's a height of emotions versus probably performing on the stage. How did I become a hospital clown? Well, my mom runs a theater company back home in Chennai. So I was on stage ever since I was five. I learned music, dance, and theater, and improvisation. And after I became a doctor, I always felt that there was something missing. How could I blend these two together? And that's when this happened. Two and a half years ago, we, at the Little Theatre, were about 11 or 12 actors that got trained by a hospital clown who came all the way from New York. And we, right now, are the first Indian troupe, hospital clown troupe. And we're hoping to spread it across India and probably parts of Asia, because I feel even though in some hospitals we only work probably one or two days a week, it's not enough. We need to be integrated into the healthcare system as full-time employees so that we can be with that patient right from the moment he or she enters the hospital till the time he or she leaves. That is when we will make the biggest impact. I believe that as hospital clowns, we are the bridges of the gap between the doctor, the healthcare system, and the patient. Because you can take care of the physical well-being of a person, but it's not enough if you don't look at the person as a whole. And after all, because of the statistics of how we laugh so little, we could use a little laugh, more laughter in our lives. After all, laughter is and will always be the best form of therapy. So everyone, laugh with me. <laughs> Thank you.